Just start Water talking, KVK. Like, oh, yeah. it's a White House. You're All right, to the White cool. House that's been blown to pieces by it. So, um, I was going to show off probably Cloud9. There are two different services. So, what I'm showing off generally are uh, solutions to a problem that we've run into in training, and it just seems like it's a problem generally for people that are new to Ruby, new to Rails, or even new to software development in general, which is that a lot of times the hardest part to get started is to install all this stuff on my machine and get it up and running. Uh, Cloud9, uh, so, so there are two different services that have come along recently to solve this problem, and basically what they both are are combination web-based IDE and hosting service provider. So that basically they both offer, and let's, let's just jump in and look at Cloud9 while I'm talking. Uh, they offer an online IDE and also spin up a virtual server for you to connect to. So literally, let's go and, um, this is Cloud9. Um, this is like the dashboard. And let's start with like creating a new workspace. And let's say I'm going to Gaslight's training class and I want to run the sample app, which I can't remember the GitHub for right off the top of my head. But I can go find it real quick. Um, oh, where is it? I think it's BFX Chicago, yeah, yeah. So if I go copy that guy, <coughs> poof, it will now be cloning that repo and spinning up a server with an IDE connected to it. And poof, there it is. I now go start editing. <laughs> It says preparing my workspace. Boom, it's done. Wow. Down there in my terminal. But does it have Emacs bindings? Mm -hmm. uh, it does have Vim mode. I haven't looked for Emacs bindings. Um, it's, using it's using ACE, which is, an, and a lot of the pieces of Cloud9 are actually open source. The ACE is, um, but down here I actually have a terminal. Let's. Um, Let's it's make one up here. That it's in place editing. That's true. But I am actually on an actual server. I mean, this is Unix. I can do things like uptime. Uh, I notice sometimes my load average will be too high and it'll start to suck. But I, I actually, um, so I'm running, let's see. I probably should do this before I do anything else. This, I believe, will take a little bit and be. Maybe a little annoying. Yeah, the only unfortunate thing that I found is that the free version of Cloud9, they put you on like the smallest box possible. So I'm paying. The server, I went ahead and gave them whatever, $9 a month or some oh, piddly amount that they wanted. It's free. So. It's, yes. <laughs> yeah, the initial version is free. Yeah. I went ahead and uh, paid for an instance of it. Um, the other thing that Cloud9 allows you to do that's cool. Uh, I don't know how long this will take to actually bundle, install, and get my app up and running. But the other thing that I can do with Cloud9 when I pay the money is I can set up workspaces that are SSH'd into my own server. So I can just use the IDE part and have it hooked into my own Amazon server. And so Oh, uh, fail. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on with that, but this is kind of impromptu. <laughs> I wonder if I have another instance that's in a happier place. Yeah, I've had, I've had instances that are stuck and working in, so mm -hmm. Well, this looks like it's, yeah, here we go. So it looked like it was trying to connect and not having any luck connecting somewhere. But now that it's installing things, maybe it won't be too terrible. We'll see. It 
render is fine, but you can't type. You can't like type into the terminal. Yeah, it's kind of a fail for an iPad. But what's amazing, you can actually do that. In an iPad, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I'll just say, like, I, I used Cloud9 like two months ago, and I was like, this is a bunch of crap, because you couldn't do anything besides yes. like, basic node stuff. Mm -hmm. And I came back two months later, and I was like, holy crap, this is like a, like a full-blown development environment yeah. underneath you. They've been working on the Ruby code, at least, you know, the development environment and stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at, so what I'm looking is the example app from our Backbone class. Um, oh. And I'm probably at a certain version of it yeah, where I don't have anything. You get <laughs> but it actually edits CoffeeScript fairly <laughs> decently. Oh, no. Huh? It's going to try to build the Ruby Racer. This is going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. actually think it really have extensions. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it actually builds the whole thing. Did you have a whole like, Git client in this and everything? Yeah, it's got Git install, it's got yeah. SSH, it's got... There Does it have? Yeah. You got it. Okay, I got it. Yeah, you totally can. One button deploy to Heroku? Yes. So originally, when I first started using it, it was like it had all this online editing, but it didn't actually run Rails in the terminal, but it could deploy to Heroku. So it, like you could edit and then deploy to Heroku, but that feedback cycle's way too slow to be acceptable. But yeah. I can run tests in this terminal, and if I can get to it, I'll, I'll show you. Um, I could actually edit CoffeeScript, be running my server, and hit it in another tab so that I would run my Jasmine specs and this see it long immediately long update. Done. This is complete insanity. It is complete insanity, and it's awesome. It's the it is. So let's, uh, I have a bunch of labs in here. Let's see if I check it's out like Start. Lab, lab 18, is that a good one? Okay. Um, <laughs> see if I can rake DB setup and it'll do something cool, maybe. Uh, I'm using SQLite, uh, and that just works. So when I want r run Rails S, it'll tell me just in a second that it'll give me some more information that I need here in a second. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So it's telling me what I need to do, and I because I forgot, but it has some environment variables set for me, so that I can it will listen on the right ho host and to the right IP address. So if I do this, when it boots up, oh yeah, totally. So now it's running here, and I can go hit preview. Oh, uh, looks like I actually need to. Yeah, so it says, hey, you're, you're running at this URL. Like Clippy for Rails. Looks like you're trying to run a that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, do I need to give it the port, do you remember? No, that's, that's your URL. It's, it's a you Proceed to anyway. Right, right. right. No, no. Oh. No, you just take out the HTTPS. OK. Oh, yeah. it's, it's always an SSL part. Huh. I don't remember hitting that last time. Just take the S out of the HTTPS. This whole thing, but this is a different URL now than it was telling me before. Oh, go back. Yeah, I don't think this is what I want anymore. Yeah, I think this is what I want to do. Oh, man, it keeps trying to redirect you to SSL everywhere. Just help. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's feeling a lot slower, that's exactly right. This URL fires up SharePoint. It's from the first Ruby stage we had was lots of people yelling at one person to type. It was awesome. I knew that the person would have that. Yeah. 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 
Mm. I can't see it hitting that at all. That's what it's telling me to go to. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, it said they can't well, slash out. That last one was, yeah. Although oh, no, that's that was before you hit it. Do you have a root route? Slash app? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well. So this is the one I actually care to go to. It's still with the SSL connection error. Yeah, maybe you should try 443. Yeah, trying to go 480. Um, it redirected me here to this. Yeah. Weird. Normally that works. Just trust us. Just trust us. No. Well, fine then. We'll look at the other one. Wait, there's another. So Action.io is like a very similar service. It doesn't have any as many bells and whistles, but it seems to work more often. <laughs> as evident. That's a good feature. It's a good feature. So I can't like give it a URL and say clone this whole app to create a new workspace kind of a thing but I can spin up a box and get a terminal and get clone myself. And if I go into CD to BFX Chicago, which is that same app I was looking at before, I can do Rails S. So the UI looks almost the same. Is there an underlying technology they're both using? Is that ace again? No, they're using totally different uh, editors. This guy's using Code Mirror, which is a different editing online framework. Whereas uh, Ace is using, or Cloud9 is using Ace. So this one will say, well, which port do you want to actually connect to? And if I do port 1000, 3000, it'll actually spin up a new box on port 3000, or it'll actually be connecting to my box with that. So it doesn't try to like close a bunch of ports. And I can actually run my specs. So if I go into spec, JavaScripts, let's see. Look at my recipe edit view spec and change it to not the new title and hit save. If I go back in here, sure enough, my spec fails. So it's actually giving me the whole in-browser editing experience. It's got fairly decent support for CoffeeScript in that, well, not doing it now, but. Is, is that a, so Cloud9 has the collaborative editing feature? Yeah, as far as I know, this does not. So if Cloud9 can invite another developer to, to join your editing session, and both of you have like the cursor in there at the same time, and you can both be editing the same file, looking at the same thing, and saying, oh, yeah. well, not this, that. Yeah. So it would totally, in real time, let both people be typing and seeing what you're doing and stuff, if it actually works. Just the app, right? What's that? Just kill the app and it. Well, that's not a bad idea, I guess. Oh, you must have been multiple hmm. Can you run it on a different port? Or no, they, they provide you a port and a... And a yeah. Yeah. They'll probably fix that at some point. Mm. Wait, that looks better. That's it. That's just totally working. Well, this is just exactly <laughs> the same thing as we had before, though, right? You just ruined it. Can't not work. It can't not work. It can't not work. <laughs> oh. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Look, they didn't 
change something that required it What's that? It redirected the port. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure without the HTTP, it'll do the same problem. Are you intentionally requiring SSL? Or? I don't know about that. Also, that's totally a thing I got bitten by with Chrome catching that redirect. That's why I'm. Hmm. I don't think that's Safari just for fun. I'll bring up Firefox. What the hell? Oh my god, what's that? Oh yeah. <laughs> So with with SSL or not? I'm going to try without first. Yeah, that's true. All right. We'll try Jasmine. Nope. Same difference. I've definitely seen it work before. <laughs> I wonder it's, I did actually upgrade, I wonder if it's like upgrading my account, like broke it somehow. Oh, maybe it put you into SM money. Maybe yeah. it put you oh, into SSL. money and you broke stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him money so that I could get the SSH business working. And it probably forces SSL yeah. every time you look at it. Yeah. Now they know you'll pay and you have to give them more money to fix the bug. <laughs> oh, you want to know certificate Seems very... Very possible. It's only ten bucks for It seems very possible. So I mean is it a reasonable editor? I mean like does it do Yeah, open up the Ruby file. Yeah. It's actually not bad at all. So what what's interesting is uh, their Ruby mode uh, I didn't I think their coffee script mode as I recall was pretty decent, but their Ruby mode isn't that great out of the box. But because it's built on ACE, I was actually, and it's not here yet, unfortunately, but I was actually able to add support for things like auto indenting when you start a class, auto de indenting when you end, fairly basic stuff. But in a couple hours, I was able to like get that into ACE, and they accepted the pull request. And the ACE editor's code base is fairly decent and easy to get started with. And there was tests that I could look at and steal from, and so that was pretty cool. So I feel like I feel like Cloud Nine's probably going to eventually win, but maybe it's because it's so ambitious that they're, you know, running into problems and not as perfectly solid as I would like right now. But um, they have a whole um, development community. Uh, well, they have a whole set of instructions for building extensions in the Cloud9, both server and client side. That seems pretty awesome. What I'd like to do with Cloud9 is get to the point where not only can I run our demo apps for training, but easily be able to like, you know, have a menu option to switch to a given lab or to run the tests or different things that I need the student to be able to do. Um, and I feel like it's got a lot of promise. It's obviously not there yet. But as far as getting people up and running with web development, this shows a lot more of the promise than I've seen in a long time. Because their editor is really close. And there's no reason it can't be just as awesome as Sublime or Vim or any of the other editors I'm using, especially Vim. No, just kidding. <laughs> I could totally envision that myself. I like to envision being down for days because they push a something that <laughs> the or EC2 goes down. Yeah, or EC2 goes down, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would make like Chromebook usable. Yeah. 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 Machines crash. You You'll still be able to run Vim on your pin client. I can tell you that much. <laughs> you just might not have Git. So anyway, that's Action.io and Cloud9. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be cooler soon. I'm still evaluating it. Uh, I'm actually, Cloud9's out of Amsterdam. I'm, I'm talking to them Thursday morning and going to try to talk in more detail about, hey, could we use you guys for training? What would that look like? Here's the features we need. 
Yeah, I, I definitely want to go there and talk to them. This has been already discussed more, Chris. I have a passport. Just saying. It seems like in the spring, in the spring and early summer might be an awesome time to go to Amsterdam. I heard that too. Anyway, that's what I know. Any other questions? Cool. Rob, you you can unplug. Huh? Are you giving up Emacs? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Never. <laughs>